inspired by Mr. John DeBerry. I wanted to tell the world why I'm not a Democrat anymore. Well, at least the United States anyways. Who cares if I, you know, am taking sides because I haven't been since 2013. And yes, it happened during the Obama nation administration. I took extreme offense to the repealing of the Smith Munt Act because I knew then that propaganda was going to be the new normal. And uh, I understood what it meant for the world because of course that was the reason why it had to be repealed because of the world wide web. So due to the internet age, we had to change the way the legal ramifications of a nation using propaganda against its citizens. As if it wasn't happening before, but at least there were laws, I guess, against it, if anybody cared to look into it. But, you know, subliminals and all, time, all, all types of covert programming was embedded into every aspect of our life. You know, Hollywood has always had the CIA intertwined in it, you know, because of the need to be able to put different agendas across and have them openly accepted by way of influencers like the Hollywood celebrities. So I understand where this stuff is coming from, but... Me being a Democrat came from all the good indoctrination from the 90s. During my formative years, I turned 10 in 1990. So I realized, you know, about things around me. It's, you know, when you come into the realization about things around you. And of course, during that time, George Bush Sr. was doing the whole Gulf War thing and that imprinted on me because of course my friends older siblings and and other relatives had gone off into the Gulf War some of them didn't make it back I thought it was terrible I never wanted to be a part of something that would go into war and the Republicans were always warmongers and I thought it was terrible so um, you know, the 90s really molded me into being this, you know, eco-friendly, uh, you know, social justice liberal. And it really did happen in the 90s. Like, that's when most of the shaping had happened through different things like sex ed being progressive well, sex ed just being in schools and um the dare program which actually taught us about drugs that's why all the 90s was about you know drugs basically doing drugs you know doing what you wanted to do being hypersexualized being hypersexual all of those things and it really did corrupt us because it wasn't even though grunge was counterculture, there's always there's always a reason why. If if especially in the nineties, before before the internet was mainstream, why on earth would they show this type of music? The controllers would not allow any of this stuff to come out if it wasn't if it wasn't able to be manipulated and used to their benefits. So Everything about the 90s, the whole grunge scene, the whole, you know, the whole gangster rap scene, every aspect of all things popular kind of shaped us into the society that we are now. And I'm an oddball, if you can't tell. I'm mixed, but I was, n I never fit in to either white or black. I had more white friends than I did black friends because 
Well, number one, I didn't know I was mixed until I was like maybe eight or nine when I finally realized it. I was picked on terribly, both by whites and blacks, but more so by black people. It was more, it was more like, like directed towards me. A lot of it was violent or hypersexualized. Like, I remember the first time I was ever sexually assaulted was by one of my peers in gym class, this black kid. He grabbed me by my titty <laughs> and I pushed him away and he smacked me. But, uh, I mean, I got it worse from black girls than anything and it was so so hard for me as a as a little kid not to have an identity and not to have a peer group to be able to fit into when I so desperately in the 90s I wanted to be like so desperately wanted to be accepted by blacks because the culture was dominated by like afrocentrism where everything was like cross colors clothing and the big African uh, medallion pieces and, you know, like in living color, Martin Lawrence, Eddie Murphy, all these people kind of like dominated what all the rap, Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg, all the rap beef, all the drama, like it, like all this stuff kind of molded the 90s generation, the Generation X, into what we are now. And some of us have, has either changed and matured and, and under, you know, we can look back and understand, you know, I don't claim for it to be the best I, at generation or whatnot, but I know that our counterculture was not so counterculture looking back on it now. Um, I don't think like everybody, nor do I want to be lumped into, uh, you know, a political paradigm that wants you to think uniformly. And that's why I'm so inspired by John D. Berry, because he is a decent, loving man honest with integrity and respect and he's a democrat those two things are kind of opposite nowadays when he got into politics i'm sure he fit right in everything was kosher but now what that his speech which was powerful inspiring phenomenal it's the wrong way to think and he just found out so I don't think like everybody I don't expect everybody to think like me I don't want to be tied to a party that wants all one uniform decision which is fascism at its finest plus the Democratic Party is not the party about love. Liberals and all these kids out in the street, they are not on hot, like good, wholesome vibrations. They are not living connected with their heart. Mind, heart connection, mind, heart, ears, you know, all that mind, everything, connection. It's not like that anymore. I don't know if it was ever, we were just fooled because, you know, me and in my deeper history search found out that the Democrats were the Dixiecrats of the Confederate South. And then after that, I sat there and I pondered about it a little bit like, well, I thought they wanted to give out stuff and, 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 and take care of people. Well, little did I know that, you know, the slave masters always threw you know, the carcass of what they ate to the slaves. So these uh, government handouts ain't nothing but just uh, ensured dependency on 
the government. And I ain't about that. So, I'm not a Democrat because Obama wiped his ass with the smith munt Act and ruined our lives now. And it's all covert indoctrination, trauma-based programming. It's just like fucking Monsters, Inc. And we live in the upside down. I'm convinced. But I'm living from the inside out because that's the only way you're going to change. But thank you, Rep. John DeBerry. Thank you for, for speaking your truth. Thank you for bringing light into the darkness. We're not all the same. I'm not even a Republican anymore. I don't want to I don't want to have any part of that bipolar party bullshit anymore. I'm here. I'm about love. I'm about self-improvement. I'm about treating others as I want to be treated. And uh, I just wanted to get that out, though. I have a lot more to talk about, and I'm not really into the video aspect of it, because I don't even want to look at the camera. I started an anchor podcast that I only have one episode up, and it's just me introducing myself, and I get a little emotional in it, but I'm thinking about, you know, talking more about what I know, what I've experienced, what I've learned in my life. I mean, I just, I don't have very many people to talk to because I lost all my friends back in 2015 and 16 because of simply wanting to give a man a chance, an, like an average man, like somebody that's not a politician that has not devoted their life to civil service, which I don't believe that shit, we shouldn't be paying these people loads of money when they ain't even doing their job but I don't have as much hate in my heart as the people that don't agree with Trump I am not into feeling emotional about about that like over emotional to the point of uncontrol you know not controlling yourself because that's how I lost friends. And I'm afraid to talk to people. Because I want to talk about these things. Because I know it's important. I get to talk to my daughter. Me and my daughter talk about stuff like this. And while she's not political, she does talk about things. And she's aware of these things. And I'm just blessed that she has a good head on her shoulders. Because she's definitely not... Your average 20 year old. Especially nowadays. Not nowadays. She might have been your average 20, 20 year old. 30, 40 years ago. Seriously. I mean she's a good kid. Hard worker. And. It's just. I'm blessed. And I'm proud. But I know that it's a reflection of me. The way that she is now. Because I've talked to her. About things like this, things that matter. Ever since she was a kid, she used to tell me I was lecturing her. But she knows and she understands now. The more that this stuff comes out, like, it's just all coming to light. That, that, uh, Geppetto Wood stuff, she's really freaked out about that. And, uh, I'm hoping that she'll join me on my podcast. Because there's, there's a lot to talk about with that. And I mean, coming from toys and cartoons from my era, even. But thank you so much for listening. Thank you to John DeBerry for speaking your truth. Because that's how a lot of us feel. And I love you. I love you all. And that's all I'm here to do. Is to talk about my experience in life. And the love that I want to share with the world. Bye, y'all.